Yes, sir, folks, another beautiful day in Capital City. And fortunately, even with smog and pollution levels climbing, we're still predicting reasonably clear skies in town. And for the students of Capital City's flying school, it's a perfect day to take to the skies. Ma'am, you will get your flying lesson. It's just that we're experiencing some very complicated technical difficulties with whoa, one of our planes. Phil, Phil, if I don't see that plane on the ground in one minute, your flying days are over. You hear me? Over. Over. Chill out, man. Just showing folks what a great pilot I am. Folks, with the smog alert in Capital City at an all-time high, to today is today is probably a good day to gather up the kitties and take a drive out into the country where the sky is blue and the air is clean. Time to come in. Come on, Gracie. Come on, Lucy. Come on, Imogene. Gracie? Lucy! Imogene! Where are my cows? just east of Capital City. Cows disappearing into thin air. We going out live to the Brown Farm, where Roscoe S. Brown is totally confused. He's trying to figure out where his prize Holstein cows have gone. They seem to have disappeared into thin air. There is a break in the fence, but no cow tracks. The only sign of foul play are these big piles of gloppy white stuff, which are all over the farm. However, neighbors report seeing strange objects swooping down from the sky, creating what this reporter is calling the barnyard befuddlement. A missing cow hotline has already been set up. Anyone with any information should contact Farmer Brown immediately. Rest assured, we'll keep on top of this story. Cows? But why aren't they trying to find out what that thing was I saw attacking that airplane? And now, on the lighter side of the news, the Capital City Flying School has reported one of their planes is missing. More than that, there's no sign of 20-something Phil Delgatti. So where is, where is Phil? <laughs> this reporter is... will stay right on top of this story. Okay, so they didn't say it, but I'm telling you, I saw something just swoop out of the sky and dive right for the airplane. And before I knew it... Everybody, you have to see this. Eustace McCafferty in the School Science Club is doing a survey on local birds. He just shot this video and sent it over to me to identify. 
It's a crow. Watch closely, it happens fast. Whoa, rewind. That looked nasty. Freeze it there a second. That's what I saw at the driving range. Have you ever seen a bird like that? Never. And no one in the Capital City Bird Watcher Society has either. Where was Eustace when he shot that? Farmlands, just outside the city. Right near the flying school. My guess is there's a connection to the cows. What cows? And the pilot. What pilot? Look, guys, we gotta act fast. Tabby, you and I will head to the farmlands to assess the damage. Antonio, we need to know everything we can about what this might be. W well, I think we should start off by researching big birds. Funk and I will go down to the Capital City Natural History Museum. Great. Funk, I fill them in on the way? Sure. I've got you now, monster warriors. You can get in your little purple car and drive all you want, but you won't be able to defeat a creature that comes not from the earth, but from the sky. <laughs> it's ingenious. And this time, I'm going to be there to see it all. <laughs> <laughs> Superintendent McClellan, this is a disaster. I mean, the Capital City Flying Authorities canceled all flights in and out of Capital City until they find out what happened to the pilot from this flying school. <sighs> what do you think it is? There's a committee being formed as we speak, sir, to find out. I think we're safe in assuming, however, that this is the work of teenagers. Teenagers? How can teenagers make pilots and planes and people disappear into thin air? The same way they made those cows disappear? I think it's something more than that. I've got a feeling. You think a monster got my girls and that airplane? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out, sir, but we're also wondering about this. Well. I wasn't sure at first, but I'm starting to think it's, uh, well, uh, bird droppings. Wait till you see this. Bird droppings? Who ever heard of bird droppings like these? Now this is a cool creature. A giant eagle. It's a raptor. But the thing in the video and the thing Tabby saw didn't have any feathers. Let's keep looking. If the droppings could do this to a tractor, think what it could do to human skin. Those tracks over by the fence? You go check it out. I'll finish up here. But if it was a bird, where are all the feathers? We don't even know for sure it is a bird we're looking for. We know it flies. We know it's big and brownish. And if our theory is correct and it is taking the cows, then it's a carnivore. A big bat? Yeah, but its wingspan would have to be twice as large just to get its body weight off the ground. So not a bird, not a bat. A flying reptile? Giant what? Yes, right away. Did you hear that? Superintendent McClellan, we've got to act immediately. Of course we do, sir. Hang on a sec. Could you book me a meeting room sometime early next week? Meeting next week? What kind of crazy city is this? <laughs> next month is fine, thanks. I need a shovel or something. See, what's strange is that the tracks start here, but then seem to head off in that direction. Yes, it's definitely a pterodactyl. A giant, prehistoric pterodactyl. Ah! Tabby! Save him! He's gone. That poor 
poor man. This isn't good, Tab. We need to get to the mayor and let him know what we're up against. Imagine this pterodactyl, but with a huge wingspan, say at least 50 feet wide, and a longer, sharper beak. But that's terrible. I mean, we can't have stuff like this flying around Capital City. I mean, people pay taxes. They have rights. And no prehistoric birds chasing after them has to be one of them. Actually, sir, the pterodactyl was, is a reptile. Now, naturally, we don't have any first-hand information on it. They did live over a billion years ago, sir. But we know it was a carnivore and had great eyesight, and it's extremely fast. Lightning fast. We also know that this particular pterodactyl has acidic excrement that can dissolve farm equipment. Wait a minute. See, that explains a lot. We've had all kinds of reports of weird activities from all over the city. I mean, people being taken by aliens, and things being melted by acid rain. What was our last report, Superintendent? Uh, Muriel Greer was snatchable shingling her roof 20 minutes ago. Wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. We rode at the farm with the pterodactyl 20 minutes ago. There's more than one pterodactyl. Yes, sir, folks, a secret source within the mayor's office has confirmed that an army of flying dinosaurs has invaded Capital City. This would explain the strange things that have been happening and the strange sightings of creatures all around Capital City. We're getting information that these creatures not only fly, but are super strong, and they come complete with acidic droppings. And when those start falling, there's no way Capital City will be able to defend itself. 100% <laughs> acid resistant shields. Oh, it's heavy. What'd you use? It's the same material they used to make desks for science labs, since they're specially adapted to resist uric acid. Okay, after charting the various sightings, examining the confluence of droppings, and estimating the monster's flying range, I've determined that the nest must be right around here. That makes sense. That's right where the pilot disappeared by the flying school. I was just at Krieger's video store. He uncovered a Klaus von Steinhauer film called Invasion from the Sky. And? Stop them? I'm afraid the only way to stop these horrible prehistoric flying beasts is with cryo cooler bombs. Without them, civilization is doomed. You see, Martin, when we entered the atomic age, we opened the door. They're coming! The giant pterodactyls are coming! Ah! Cryo what? Cryo cooler. I swear that's what he said. Man, what didn't those crazy movie makers make up? Uh, except in this case, they didn't. If you could actually manufacture one, a cryocooler bomb would be loaded with superfluid helium, the coldest substance there is. Now, once the outside casing reaches a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius, helium is released, and- I get it. Kaboom. Frozen from the inside out. All we have to do is get the pterodactyls to swallow one each, and in about five minutes, their own internal body temperature should detonate the bombs. Right, but where are we supposed to find superfluid helium? Well, in actual fact, the only reason I know anything about this is because the School Science Club is doing a project on extreme substances. And with Eustace McCafferty away, technically, I am the interim president of the club. Which means... I can get some from lockup. Water bottles as a casing for the cryocooler bombs. I mean, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it could work. We can make a cryocooler bomb for each pterodactyl. Come on, gang. It's monster time. Cryocooler bombs to the pterodactyls. And getting out of the way in time. And the other key is sneaking up on them. The nest should be just around those trees. Ah! 
Monster warriors doing with this silly thing. trouble. Not only is the pterodactyl taking her out over the ocean, but but she's got less than two minutes until that bomb detonates. Help! I need an aircraft! Can someone help me? I need an aircraft! Oh, that was rough. Where did you come from? Big brown thing. Not good. Tried to eat me in my plane. You're Phil. The pilot. Yeah. Why are you looking at me like that? Who's in plane number six? Plane number six, come in, please. Hey, flying school, I'm back. You're about to see some fancy flying. <laughs> Phil, is that you? throttled you. I was so worried. No worries, Charlie. We've got a monster warrior to save. Monster what? Are you sure this is gonna work? Yeah, yeah, I do stuff like this all the time. The bomb just exploded inside the pterodactyls. Okay, what do I do now? All right, I'm gonna fly right under them. You're gonna open the hatch, and you're gonna haul her in, okay? That must be the bomb Tabby threw finally going off. Catch those warriors. Catch them all. Oh, Luke, that 
That was crazy. Yeah. Well, at least we got rid of the pterodactyl. But most of all... What? Well, we didn't let anything happen to one of the team. I'm just saying, I have sort of mixed feelings about Phil. You know, on the one hand, he did save my life. But on the other hand, he did kind of dive bomb me at the driving range. <laughs> and now this. Does this make any sense whatsoever? All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Key to the city. Key to the city, yes! I'm a pilot. I can fly anything. Now oh, that is man. very strange. You want strange? Check this out. Who's the farmer in the middle of the jungle? It's from Costa Rica. Here. It says, hello, warriors. Having a great time, wish you were here. Turns out there are a lot more cows in Costa Rica than in Capital City. Couldn't be happier, said Farmer Brown. <laughs> okay, so one of our pterodactyls flew him all the way to Costa Rica and just dumped him there before leaving, and he survived. It is pretty strange. <laughs> <laughs> 